Hey there everyone, so recently I unboxed three new alarms. This one right here is the Edwards GCA horn only. The one in the middle is the Edwards GCV strobe only. And then the one on the end here is the Edwards GCAV combination horn and strobe. These three are new alarms that Edwards has gotten out on the market in the last couple of years. And they're pretty unique. A lot of people want to know more about them, so that's what I'm going to do today. This video is going to be detailing more on these new alarms. Thank you for tuning in. So right off the bat here, I'll go ahead and address probably the big ticket question, and that is, why do these alarms have four separate strobes on them? Well, that's a great question. The National Fire Protection Association, or NFPA, would like to see alarms and buildings light up the majority of occupied space when there's an active fire. And why is that? Well, if there was a hearing impaired occupant in the building, they would be able to see the light, turn around, look at the alarm, read the fire lettering, and know that there is an active fire hazard within the building. So, these alarms right here in front of me are ceiling mount fire alarms, meaning that they're supposed to be mounted on the ceiling. And Edwards has determined that for them, the best way of doing things to make sure that uh, the majority of the room gets lit up by a strobe is to have four separate strobes. Traditionally, companies have had just one strobe in the center of the alarm that is designed to flash a, in a 360 degree pattern um, or at a 360 degree angle. However, Edwards has once again, for them, found it better to have just four separate strobes. It meets the requirement that, or not requirement, but strongly recommended suggestion that NFPA has a lot better. So with that being said, the strobes themselves do have a couple of features. For one, these are LED. Now LED has come out in the last 10 years and uh, I think will continue to be a lot more prominent in the fire alarm service. And that is because number one, it's, it's cheaper. It uses a lot less current draw, a lot less power. And let's say that, you know, the fire alarms are in a unmonitored system and they go off at nine o'clock at night when no one's in the building due to a false alarm and they go off and flash the entire night well that's going to save a lot more power versus if it were an actual strobe that was flashing these are just led lights they also last a lot longer that led light is not going to burn out easily and uh, you can have more of these alarms on the same circuit since it uses less current draw uh, the strobe current draw for these alarms is 35 milliamps across all of the candela settings. And yes, these alarms all are multi-candela, meaning that they have different brightness settings. So if you're installing these alarms in a bigger room, then you might want to have it the strobe be a little brighter so that it, uh, it flashes, it, the, the flash is able to reach more of the room. There's actual mathematics that goes into this to, to determine the brightness level in, in these buildings. But that's a little farther out than what we're gonna cover in this video. <laughs> um, anyways, these strobes on these alarms can do 15, 30, 75, or 110, can, or 115 candela light output. So that is the strobe. So now I'll actually take apart the alarm here and show you more about it. So on the front, through this little hole right here, you can see the candela settings. When an installer installs this alarm, they're gonna take apart the cover right here. So I'll go ahead and do that. You just take it apart just by pulling at it, kind of like that. And you can actually get these covers in red or white. As you can see, here's a red one. And you can uh, get them with lettering that says alert, fire, few, fuego, or without any lettering. This one right here does not have any lettering. And that's nice because then you can use these alarms for uh, anything that would require alarms. So this one right here might not even be a fire alarm. Uh, but this one, since it says fire on it, would absolutely be used for fire purposes. Uh, anyways, now that this is off, I'll go ahead and show you some more of the inside of the alarm. Here's what it looks like on the inside. This right here is the horn. Now, fun fact, these ceiling mount models come in horn or speaker models, and they both look, look the exact same. So if you see these in buildings, you won't know necessarily if it's a horn or a speaker strobe. But this one right here is a horn strobe. And uh, right here is where you can adjust the candela setting. So 
It's really simple. You just flip this little switch here up or down and that adjusts how bright your strobe is. So now I just put it on 15 candela. Uh, right here there's a plus and a minus with two holes and what you can do with that or what installers can do with that is they can use a meter kind of like this one right here and they can test the continuity of the alarm to make sure that it's correct. And then right here you can adjust the volume and the pattern settings for the horn. So right here there's a little switch and this is actually a really nice feature to adjust the horn settings. In earlier models that Edwards created you had to permanently uh, break something on the alarm in order to switch the horn settings. So with this it's just a switch that you can flip as many times as you would like which is really nice. So it can do uh, C low, which means continuous low volume. Uh, some jurisdictions, depending on whoever the authority of having jurisdiction is, will allow other codes besides temporal three to be used. Temporal three tone is the uh, three beats followed by a beat of rest, followed by another three beats of, of tone that you hear out of fire alarms. That is the tone that NFPA would like to see being used for a fire evacuation. So yes, you can probably already guess that the, the T means temporal. That's also in the in the fire alarm hobby world kind of used as a code three, but it's it's more formally known as temporal three. And it can do high or low volume. Now, fun fact, these alarms come automatically on high volume. So most of these that you see in buildings are probably gonna be set on high volume since usually installers might not bother to change the around the settings too much. But uh, high volume is 92 decibels and low volume is 86 decimals. Now, why is there a high and low volume, you ask? Well, once again, NFPA. So, NFPA requires that the sound a, a fire alarm makes be at least 15 decibels above the average ambient sound of the room that it's in or it could be five decibels above the maximum sound that that room has. So in short, these alarms have to be louder than everything that's in that building. And let's say you're in a loud room, well, you're definitely going to have it on its high setting. But if you're in like a nice quiet hotel room, if you wanna be nice when you're installing this, you can set it on its low volume setting. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the back of the alarm. All right here's the back. As you can see, there is some writings on the back. It just gives some more information about the alarm. Obviously, it meets UL standards and all of that. This alarm can operate between 16 and 33 volts DC. And what's nice about this is that that works whether you're using filtered or FWR power. Now, how do I mount this alarm to the wall and power it up? So this right here is probably the biggest criticism Edwards faced when they released these alarms, and that is the mounting bracket comes separately in packs of 10. Huh? So this right here is the Edwards GP10 mounting bracket, and you have to buy this separately. So note that if you're purchasing this alarm, make sure that you're also purchasing a mounting bracket, or you know that the alarm comes with a mounting bracket. You first mount your mounting bracket, to the back box and then you do all your wiring and then all you have to do is snap the alarm into the mounting bracket in order to mount it to the wall. This is very, it, it's very easy, it's very nice. Traditionally, alarm with some alarms you would have to, uh, the, the terminals would physically be on the back of the alarm and you'd have to hold the alarm while trying to screw the wires in and uh, it's just easier this way having the the snappy design notice this little red piece right here it's called a shorting clip now they say that it's used for testing but really it just binds both the positive terminals together and it's honestly not entirely that useful in my opinion but uh, uh, when you're installing this alarm you're going to remove this just by pulling on the sides here and it comes off and all you have to do is snap it in. Usually you would uh, stick your screwdriver in and kind of pull it like this. You don't do that with this alarm. You actually just push it and the mounting bracket should come loose. Now I don't have it mounted to the, to the wall so it's a little hard but uh, I'll go ahead and take it off here. You just push down and it comes off. The mechanism right here 
instead of uh, pulling it out, all you have to do is push this, which frees the alarm. Now obviously I can't end the video without testing the alarm so you can hear what it sounds like. And that's what we're going to do. This right here is low volume temporal. And then lastly, this is low volume continuous. Pretty loud. Thank you all for watching this video. If you haven't seen the unboxing I did of these alarms and others, definitely go check out that video. Rate, comment, and subscribe, and please have a wonderful day.